When Kim and I took these improv classes, we took them just to have fun. We like to do things together most of the time. <laughs> so this is going to be a fun thing to do together. But along the way, we gained a lot of benefits from these improv classes. I can think of three main benefits. The first is we increased our mental flexibility, the ability to think outside the box. The second is we were more quick on our feet after doing these improv classes. But most importantly, I think we improved our communication skills. There's one concept in improv that I think is a critical communication concept, and that is not negating, but to accept and move on. It's called yes and in improv, where whatever happens in a scene, you are in agreement with it, and you don't tell the other person, no, I don't want to do that. You just accept it, and you move on and add to it. And how I applied that in my own life actually came right after I took the improv class. I was at church one morning when an acquaintance of mine who did not attend the church was visiting. So afterwards, I chatted with her, well, what brought you to the church? And she said, well, my little ones are getting older, and I really think they should have some religious education. It really doesn't matter what religion, because they're all the same. <laughs> now... My inside reaction was sort of like this. What? Are you kidding? They're not all the same. But you think that would have played very well? I think I would have just blown her out of the church if I had done that. So instead, I applied what I'd learned in improv and said something like this. Yes, many religions do share similar philosophies, such as the golden rule. And that's great for kids to learn at home and in a religious setting. So rather than blow her out of the water, I was able to come across as agreeing, even though I didn't quite agree, I turned it in a direction that was agreeable to me, and we were able to continue the conversation. So we're going to take a few minutes just to practice some fun improv games. Now the first game we're going to play is very simple. It's called One Word Story. It's harder than it sounds, though, because one of the things that you gain by doing this is the ability to just give up control. So often, especially when we're listening with people, we're planning in advance what we're going to be saying, and we're not really listening. With this, you might have to have a really boring word, like a or the, in order to keep the story going, and you can't plan it out in advance because you don't know what it's going to be by the time it gets to you. And so we'll start out with some kind of theme. And the theme I'm going to pick is shoveling snow in the driveway. So just go ahead and start with a word, just one word, and we're going to just keep that theme in your mind. And of course, the theme might change as we go around. So just any word today.
you have just negated them. You try to sound like you're agreeing, but by saying but, you have negated. So try today to say yes and to people. Now, for this next activity, we need to pair up. Determine one person to be number one and the other person to be number two. I'll be number one. Okay. <laughs> Now, it really doesn't matter who's number one and who's number two. We're going to do an exercise called mirroring. <coughs> the point of this exercise is to help you become very aware of other people's body language. When you're talking with people and interacting with people, they tell you volumes by their body language. In this exercise, what we're going to do is the number one person will start and then in a little bit I'll say switch and then the number two person will be the leader. So you're going to switch leadership in this activity. And what you'll be doing is you'll face each other and number one will start making go ahead very slow motion and the other person has to pay attention and you can even make